Before we get into virtual functions, let's review a couple of things about classes and inheritance. Remember that when you have one class inherit from another class, you can override, or overwrite, a parent class's functions with some new functionality. So here in the child class panda, we are overriding the eatfish function, which was originally declared and defined in the bear class. Secondly, we can also utilize pointers to point to a specific class. And when two classes are related, we can create a pointer to the parent data type and point it to a child's address. However, if we do this, then when we call the overwritten function, it will call the original parent version, or whichever version matches the data type pointer. We can create pointers that point to classes. We might want to make a pointer of the base class type but point to some of the children, so that we can write generic code that can handle any sort of specialization. So when we're overwriting functions, how do we make sure that it calls the correct version, not just whatever version matches the pointer data type? This is where virtual functions comes in. Here we have a parent class and a child class. In the parent class, there is one virtual function and one non-virtual function. Both of these are overwritten in the child class. But in the implementation, we have a pointer to the parent, the bear class, and it is assigned the address of 1, a bear, and 2, a panda. If we call both of these functions for both a bear and a panda object, but both being pointed to through a bear pointer, you'll notice that with the first function, the roar function, it'll display the correct one, bear roar and panda roar. But for the second one, the eat fish, which is not virtual, it will display the bear version both times. If we create a pointer to the parent type and call a non-virtual function, it's going to call the parent version of the function and not the overwritten child version of the function. However, if we declare the function as virtual, it does not matter if our pointer type is of the parent's type and is pointing to the address of the child, the child version of the function will be called. By utilizing virtual functions, we can now write programs that utilize pointers to handle many different classes that have a common parent. The program doesn't care about what exactly the class is, but it can operate on the specialized implementations, or the child classes themselves, via their common interface, which was defined by the parent class. Sometimes we don't want the user to actually create an instantiation of the parent object. Perhaps it's just defining the interface that all of the children will use. We can make a class into an abstract class so that it cannot be instantiated as an object at all, but its children can. So for example, if we were writing a program to handle multiple types of documents on a computer, we might know that they all share some common functionality. We can declare a load and a display function in the class as a pure virtual function by ending the line with a equals zero. By doing this, we can no longer create an instantiation of this iDocument object, but when we create a child of iDocument, then it is required that we define these functions in each child. If we don't end up defining the pure virtual functions in the children, then the children will also be abstract classes. So here's an example where my text document child intends to overwrite the display function, but it doesn't have load there, so on the bottom you can see that there's an error message. The compiler will not let me instantiate a type of text document, because I haven't defined all of the pure virtual functions that it has inherited. So the iDocument class itself doesn't really have any functionality, it's just an interface. We can declare different types of child classes like a text document, a CSV document, and a web document, and each type of document might be implemented wildly differently. But we know that they at least have a common interface. They have a load function, and a display function, and maybe some others. So we can enforce it in the program via using the iDocument abstract class as an interface. Well, what good is having a common interface if we have to write different but pretty much duplicate code to handle each type of data type? Well, we don't have to. Using pointers, we can treat all of the document types as an iDocument, and so our code doesn't need to change all that much when we're actually calling those common functions.
Now we're getting into polymorphism. Utilizing an abstract base class is not required to use polymorphism, we can use a pointer of any base class pointer type. The main idea is that we write generic code, no need to duplicate the same code for each type of the child, we simply treat them all the same through their common parent interface. There is a common interface, but each child class can expand upon it, so it can have its own specializations. So, here we have different functions that help get its job done, but we still interface with each document through a common set of functionality. Each specialization has its own inner workings, but to the program in general, all it cares about is that there is a save function. This all works because of late binding, or dynamic binding, and this occurs when we utilize the virtual keyword. This means the program can figure out which function to call at runtime. Late binding utilizes something called the virtual table, which is also often called the vtable. This is essentially a table of functions declared as virtual and the vtable contains the pointers to those functions, which, by the way, we haven't learned how to do function pointers yet, but that's what it is. Every class that has virtual functions, whether declared in itself or in its parent, has a vtable. This is why the correct function gets called, even if the pointer is expecting to point to its parent type. If the function is not virtual, the function called is the one that is the same data type as the pointer. Also keep in mind, when you are using virtual functions and inheritance, you will want to make sure that any destructors you create are virtual. We want to make sure that the correct destructor is called when an item is destroyed. Here, notice that only the canine destructor is called, and not the corgi constructor from the child class. If we created a dynamic variable with the new keyword, using a pointer to a parent type, without having our destructor be virtual, it would try to call the parent's destructor when it is destroyed. This could cause memory problems if the child class allocates any memory as part of its implementation. If the parent class destructor is called, then any memory managed by the child would not be handled appropriately. With all of the destructors being virtual, each destructor in the family is called. Now, if one or multiple classes in the family tree deal with memory management, each of their destructors will be called to hopefully clean up that memory appropriately. So now that we've covered all of this information about virtual functions, abstract classes, and polymorphism, let's put it into practice with a sample program. All right, so here's a sample game that was one of the assignments uh, for one of my classes before we did anything with classes whatsoever. So. You have HP, enemy has an HP, enemy is controlled by the AI, which is really just a random number, and the player is controlled by getting input from the user. So it's kind of a small program. Let's just go ahead and add some classes to it, and we'll utilize polymorphism. So we'll just create a character um, file. We'll have character.cpp as well. Let's move these over here. say if not defined character define character and end okay so for our character class let's just say it's i character it's an interface so i'm prepending it with an i each character will have the ability to get an attack amount so let's say um, int get attack int or let's see, get a healing amount, int get healing. Every uh, character will have some amount of HP. Maybe we'll give them some attack amount. And maybe if they're, I don't know, doing healing, maybe it's magic. So this is their magic amount. And there'll be a way for them to choose which item they do. So let's create an enumeration just to make it a little bit clearer, like uh, turn choice, and we'll have attack or heal. It'll be either 0 or 1. We'll have turn choice, and we will return something. So get choice. We will make this a pure virtual function, because the enemy AI versus the player will have different ways of deciding which choice they're doing. 
So we're going to have to end up refactoring some of this. Let's go ahead and include character.cpp or HPP. This is the function for the player to actually get some sort of choice and healing and random and whatever. Um, this is an abstract class. We cannot make an instantiation of it now. I character, so it will not let that happen. But we can still define what these functions do. So let's go ahead and put those down here. And this will be I character, and they'll just be inherited by both classes. W here we just have some random um, values, so we'll throw this in here. We could modify it based on the attack and healing, so let's say we'll have this modified by the attack amount and the magic amount. We don't need these here anymore. Maybe we also want to be able to set these, so void setup. Let's also give it a name just so we can easily address it. So const string name, and we'll pass in the attack and magic amount. And we can also declare that in here, or define it, sorry. So this will just be initializing these. So m name is name, m attack is attack and magic is magic. So here we have this. We can also initialize the HP to 100. Not have to deal with that. So we can have, mm, well, we don't have what kind of thing it is yet. So we can't really declare it. We don't have a player or enemy type yet, but we will be able to in a moment. So we have basically everything that they have in common. And then we'll have to make a player and an enemy class. Okay, so let's go ahead and create these classes. We'll have an NPC class and a player class. Okay, now these will automatically inherit all of this stuff and it will inherit this, but it will still be a pure virtual function when it inherits it. So if we try to create a player now, the program will complain that it's still an abstract type. So we either need to just say this is also abstract here and it will be defined in some child or we can actually go ahead and define it so we'll, we'll do that here we'll say uh, turn choice npc get choice and we'll have the player version so for the npc it's going to return either 0 or 1 all we need to do is say return we will cast it to a turn choice option Rand, so it'll either be 0 or 1. Here, we'll just ask the user, so choice, select your choice, blah blah blah, and we'll return that, and we'll not do any error checking at the moment, just we will hope that it's correct. So, um, and then this needs to also be converted, so turn choice, casting it, there. So we have some other stuff to fix now. Let's go ahead and I'm going to create a player and an NPC, but we won't be using those in the actual game loop. We want to use them as an array. So we'll have an array of pointers to some I character objects. So we'll just call this players and we have two. The first one, players zero pointer is, well, let's actually prepend this with pointer just so it's super clear. It's going to point to the address of player, and the other one is going to point to the address of the NPC. Oh, capitals. Okay, so now we can just address these directly, and they'll use the same interface. Um, so the setup function sets these up as 100. We don't need to do that anymore. Uh, these are all protected, so we might want to actually create a function to get HP. So we can say while uh, printer players zero get HP. We'll just replace this stuff. 
Well, they have HP, and then we'll display the menu. That's just up here. We could just also pass in the pointers themselves, but your HP, enemy HP, we're not using the name at the moment. Um, we will want to make sure to call the setup function. So let's just call this player and give them attack of 10 and 10. It will be unfair and call this one enemy and just give them 5 and 5. So we can build it. All of this other stuff kind of needs to be updated. The main idea now is right now we have the player and then the enemy, but we can then change this up. So we have the player choosing which thing they're doing. Again, it displays the menu and then they choose. So instead we can say for int i is 0, i is less than 2, i plus plus. So for each character we will say pointer players at this position, get choice, it's choice equals blah blah blah, and based on that they will do whatever damage. Let's also have string get name, just so we can display that. Okay, so if choice is zero, which maybe we'll update this because again it's based on this right here. We don't even have to say choice is zero. Uh, we could make this turn choice. If turn choice is attack, just to make this a little bit easier to read, else it's going to be uh, heal. You can just say choice is heal. This really isn't necessary, but I like having it there so we can actually have the kind of that label. So we'll have an attack damage and we'll attack the enemy and blah blah blah. That's really not the important part. I will just go ahead and do this off screen um, and then we will step through how the classes are the same. Uh, this is really where we're utilizing polymorphism is through the virtual get choice function. So just a moment. Okay, so this has been updated. We don't need this get choice function anymore. We have our player being created and our enemy being created, and we have our array of character pointers. While their HP is greater than zero, so while neither of their HPs is zero, it'll display the menu with their HP. It'll get each character's choice. This is just a simple thing to get the index of the other player character. So all we need is one for loop now, and we have the way to handle attacking or healing. It gets the amount of damage or healing. The heal function automatically will heal the player. And the attack function will return how much damage is done, and uh, the other player will be damaged. So there's a subtract damage that just subtracts from their HP. And so the program will continue looping until someone is out of HP and then it will loop through and say which player has been defeated or you know both of them. So that's a really simple example of utilizing a uh, virtual function and an abstract class and polymorphism to utilize generic code so we don't have to keep repeating it over and over for how we handle enemy or hand how we handle the player um, we could potentially add a lot more players here. We could add like a bunch of NPCs and all we need to do is iterate through it and add that little bit of logic. So.